Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope we're all doing absolutely fine. And today, as usual, we're gonna continue with the daily stoic. And today we're gonna have two more meditations, as usual. So, let's get started. Wish not, want not. Remember that it's not only the desire for wealth and position that the basis and subjugates us, but also the desire for peace, leisure, travel and learning. It doesn't matter what the external thing is, the value we place on, the, on it subjugates us to another. Where our heart is set, there, there our impediment lies. Epictetus discourses. Surely, Epictetus isn't saying that peace, leisure, travel, and learning are bad, is he? Thankfully, no, but careless, ardent desire, if not bad in and of itself, is fraud with potential com complications. What the desire ma makes us vulnerable, whether it's an op opportunity to travel the world or to be the president or for five minutes of peace and quiet. When we pine for something, when we hope against hope, we set ourselves up for disappointment because fate can always intervene and then we'll likely lose our self-control in response. Is As Diogenes, the famous cynic, once said, it is the privilege of the gods to walk to want nothing, and of godlike man to want little. To want nothing makes us makes one invincible, because nothing lies out, outside our contr your control. This doesn't just go for what these does. This doesn't just go for not wanting the easy to criticize things like wealth or fame, the kinds of folly that we see illustrated in some of our most classic plays and fables. The green light, that green light that Gatsby strove for, for, can represent seemingly good things too, like love or a noble cause, but it can wreck someone all the same. When it comes to your goals and the things you strive for, ask yourself, am I in control of them or are they in control of me? What's better left unsaid? Cato practiced the kind of public speech capable of moving the masses, believing proper political philosophy takes care like any great city to maintain the warlike element. But he was never seen practicing in front of others, and no one ever heard him rehears re 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 his pitch. When he was told that people blame him for his sons, he replied, better they, better they not blame my life. I begin to speak only when I'm certain what I'll say isn't better left unsaid. Plutarch Cata the Younger It's easy to act, it's easy to act, to, di to just dive in, it's harder to stop, to pause, to think. No, I'm not sure I need to do that yet. I'm not sure I'm ready. As Cato entered politics, men expected swift and great things from him. Student speeches, roaring condemnations, wise analysis. He was aware of this pressure, a pressure that exists on all, on all of us at all times, and resisted. It's easy to pander to the mob and to our ego. Instead, he waited, waited, and prepared. He praised his own thoughts, made sure he was not reacting emotionally, selfishly, ignorantly, or prematurely. Only then would his would his pick, when he was con con confident that his words were worthy of being heard. To do this requires awareness. It requires us to stop and evaluate, evaluate ourselves honestly. Can you do that? Right, guys. So, 
We're gonna continue tomorrow as usual. Thank you for joining me today on this video. See you tomorrow. Bye.